There we go. So, while the world looks at Cornwall for the G7 Summit next month, a number of organisations are coming together to host a virtual alternative G7 event that aims to encourage conversations about our future and celebrate our beautiful county. To tell us more about this exciting event, Helen Boardman from Cornwall Volunteer Sector Forum joins us now. Hello. 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 Lovely to meet you. Hello. Thank you for coming on the show, Helen. Really nice to meet you. Yeah, it's, it's my pleasure. I'm really happy to be here. Thanks for having me. No problem at all. Um, I'll start straight off, Helen, if that's the right. Uh, for those who may not be familiar with Cornwall VSF, myself included, I'll be honest, uh, could you tell us what you do? <laughs> no, that that would be great. Um, so it's it's Cornwall Voluntary Sector Forum, and it's an easy um, thing to confuse with volunteer. Um, okay. Because... A lot of people think that charities are um, run by volunteers and only volunteers, but there's a lot of paid staff that work within charities across Cornwall and community groups as well. Um, would you like me to tell you a little bit about Cornwall Voluntary Sector Forum? Absolutely, yeah. please. Yes, whatever you whatever you like. So obviously, we've got questions we would want to ask, but if you yeah. want to go for it, you go for it. Okay, so... We're known as the voice of the voluntary sector and there's about 2,500 registered charities in Cornwall and then around up to 4,000 uh, chari uh, charities and community groups. So those would be like not registered with the Charity Commission. So we have a lot on offer in Cornwall supporting sometimes the most vulnerable individuals in our communities. And our role is to really harness the strength and the passion and the resources um, within those charities and bring them together so they can make a big collective impact and support the most people in places they most need it. So we're known as the voice of the voluntary sector because we produce every day lots of information that help um, our members to, to achieve the things that they set out to achieve. And we um, have lots of conversations with them every day. And we call that um, our alliance model. So we've got lots of different alliances where people with common interests come together day to day and talk about the things that they're finding most challenging or most important. So we're a convener of conversation. We provide information. We also train and coach and buddy and wherever we can be in service to that voluntary sector, we really try to be. Love that. The voice of the voluntary sector. It That's sounds very good. It does, doesn't it? Yeah. So, Helen, yeah. obviously, what made you guys decide to host an alternative event to the G7 then? Well, I think like most um, people, when you hear about a G7 coming to Cornwall, it sounds very glamorous and so sort of... It's sort of pregnant with opportunity, isn't it? And our equivalent in the voluntary sector to a government leader would be what we call a civil leader. So those are the people in those organisations, in the charity and voluntary organisations, that are really uh, invested in their communities, in their civic duty, and really want to lead others uh, towards... Um, addressing the issues that the government are trying to address, like health inequality or poverty or homelessness. So we equally have lots of people working in these charities. I think that at my last count, um, it's over 10,000 people working in these charities that deeply care and are passionate about similar issues that the government obviously are uh, statutorily responsible to address. And we wanted to combine all of our sort of thinking and think of creative ways we could improve Cornwall for future generations. And wouldn't it be great if we could bring all that thinking in one place at one time and have a good go at thinking, how do we improve our health, our environment and our economy in Cornwall? Because we love Cornwall, because we're very invested in, in the people and places in Cornwall and that what we have in abundance in our sector is brilliant ideas. And you don't have to be powerful. You don't have to be rich. You don't have to have a title to have brilliant ideas. And we want to bring all of those brilliant ideas together to create solutions and to create things that will make a massive difference now and in the future. 
That sounds absolutely brilliant. Um, I'm Cornishman myself, and it's lovely to see this kind of thing going on to really think about the county. We love Cornwall. We do love Cornwall, absolutely. <laughs> it sounds really exciting as well. Um, what would you say are your do not miss parts? Um, so we, I mean, it's been amazing that we've pulled off this a great lineup of, well, you know, famous high net, um, high profile individuals and our own champions in, in the voluntary sector who are doing incredible things. So I would say, please don't miss anything. But if your thing is health and you haven't got the four hours of on the Friday, the 11th of June to spare, then do come along and learn all things about health. We've got Professor Sir Michael Marmot, we've got Hazel Stutley, we've got workshops. Similarly, around the environment, we've got um, Tom Burke, an environmentalist, and Emily Stevenson, the Beach Guardian. And then around the economy, we've got Cassie Robinson um, and the Kindness Economy. So there's all great things for everybody. And during the interval, though, we've got some amazing films. We've been out on the ground with Chaos TV uh, for the last month, filming the amazing things that our voluntary sector are doing um, around the environment. So we've got Plastic Free Falmouth, we've got Care No Library of Things uh, for the Economy of Kindness, and we've got Ignite You for Health, which supports and empowers people to take ownership of their health. So. We've got some great things. And we've also got an amazing executive coach who we couldn't afford personally, but has given his time free to come and coach everybody to take the ideas forward and make a powerful difference. So it's going to be a great event. Her Royal Highness, the Duchess of Cornwall, is going to open the address. Um, and it's really is testimony to the generosity of all of these people. They haven't charged us a penny. Chaos wow. TV have given their time for free, along with the NHS Horizons team to professionally moderate us, a sales force to project plan, to keep us on track, alive with ideas, I've designed the event. Um, we've also got Go Make a Difference, Andy Gilbert, who's given his coaching. And you know what? We haven't spent a penny on our conference other than buy two banners. So I'm wow. incredibly proud of the generosity and the ingenuity of spirit behind this conference. It's incredible. It is. And just seeing your passion for it as well just yeah, makes absolutely. it even better. So obviously we understand that young people are a key part to your um, event. Can you tell us what sort of things they'll be up to and what's on offer for them? So I can tell you a quick story that um, uh, is basically the idea behind the whole event, but more importantly, the children's piece. So this time, um, six years ago, somebody told me a story about Canadian redwood trees, also known as sequoia trees. And I understand that the first sequoia trees have now just come to Cornwall. And if you don't know about them, they're the biggest and widest trees on the planet and they live for very, very many generations. And the great thing about sequoia trees is when they germinate as seeds, they all germinate at the same time, often after a forest fire, because they need amazing nutrients to germinate in the soil. And the reason that they germinate at the same time is because the soil is only often 12 feet deep. So the environmental conditions have to be perfect because they have to grow an interlocking root system to be able to stand so tall and wide for all those hundreds of years. So we use this metaphor to think about how do we create a thought forest of ideas um, that basically then germinate other ideas and can bear fruit. And we invited some young people to draw around their hands in the form of a leaf and put their ideas on the leaf about how we can co-create a better future for Cornwall. And they've been busy all month in these um, workshops led by our brilliant Amber Davis, our youth engagement worker, talking about their ideas and being really inspired and motivated because we want to create, metaphorically speaking, a thought forest um, and we want to create an interlocking root system in the voluntary sector because we know that we're going to see some really tough times ahead. 
where we might not have the money we need to make that difference. And what we do have in abundance are all those seeds of ideas that can really change the future of Cornwall. So I'm really emotional because <laughs> young people have invested so much effort into this, along with the adults, so because they're so passionate about Cornwall and they're so passionate about their families, their friends and their communities. And they're so passionate about making a difference. And it hurts their hearts when they see the poverty and the homelessness and the difficulties people face. And we don't want the people of Cornwall to be left behind. And we want the people of Cornwall's voices to be heard. And we also want the charities who work really closely with those people on the ground every day to be heard because they know firsthand what is needed. And it's our job to amplify those voices and to shine a spotlight on their efforts. And it's so important that you come to this event and it's so important that we hear you because we can gather all of the, that content like harvest and we can store it until the time is right for us to seed those ideas and make something happen. That's love. It's lovely to see your passion for this. It really is. Don't don't apologise for it at all. Um, it sounds absolutely amazing what you're doing. Um, and I just want to bring it back now to organisations, if that's right. Can organisations now still get involved? Um, is there still time to sign up? How could they get involved? Yes. OK, so on Cornwall Voluntary Sector Forum website, there will be immediately obvious information, alternative G7 on the 11th of June between 10 and 2.30 and it's free. And the link on that website will take you to Eventbrite where you can book your ticket. We've currently got 156 tickets that have been taken, but we've got enough space for 280 people. So there is lots of time to get your ticket. We've also got a social media campaign called I Am Cornwall, which is basically I Love Cornwall in other speak. And we're asking people to do a short you know, 15 to 20 second uh, at her phone video uh, in landscape, basically saying, I am Cornwall when I go to the beach and wade in the sea or whatever Cornwall means for you, which helps you to love it all the more. So we've got a social media campaign called I am Cornwall. You can write to me on office at cornwallvsf.org with all of your amazing ideas especially if they relate to health, environment, economy. And I will amplify your ideas in every place that I go and we will make good use of them. Um, you can also basically um, champion this event and share it with other friends and colleagues in the sector if you think that they should be there. And I think that pretty much is sort of sums it up. We're going to have some young people at Chaos TV on the actual day, and they're going to be yeah. doing some great activities around the Thought Tree. So, you know, tune into Chaos TV on the day if you want to see firsthand the film footage, the interviews, the young people's activities that, um, you know, get behind us. It's time to wake up. It's time to wake up voluntary sector. It's time to wake up active citizens. It's time to step up. It's time to make your voices heard. It's time to give and gift your ideas generously. We, it's time to call out the gold in you and to hear from you and really send up a loud shout to the world leaders who are visiting us on the day that the people of Cornwall know firsthand what's needed. And if they're appeal and that call goes out to say be generous people get behind the voluntary sector invest in them to make a difference and it's time to really amplify that need absolutely love that powerful I've, stuff isn't absolutely it? i've got to say i am cornwall and i'm eating a pasty job done <laughs> <Okay>. that's it <laughs> well, I you need to send in your i am cornwall video <laughs> i okay, love well this this social media campaign this i am cornwall um, campaign you're talking about I think we've actually got Laura from your team who has filmed mm -hmm. a little example for us I think we'll play that now I am Cornwall when the rent is high but I get to swim in the sea every day I am Cornwall when I'm doing a youth club I am Cornwall when I'm volunteering in the community I am Cornwall when I'm driving and stuck behind a tractor 
but I have beautiful scenery all around me. I am Cornwall when I'm playing rugby. Yes. <laughs> I just say, um, <laughs> the uh, the uh, stop behind a tractor one that one hit me hard <laughs> but i see i see what you're doing it's it's, it's absolutely lovely i i love the uh, like a negative followed by a positive as well just to really <laughs> show you know sh show it's, it's it's absolutely lovely it is. um the g7 in cornwall feels like it's uh, a once in a lifetime event which the whole world obviously is going to be looking at us what would you like the legacy to be and our part in changing the world for the better well, I think that we possess great ingenuity and passion and foresight and vision in our sector and our active citizens that volunteer all over Cornwall. And I would like to harness that. And I really believe that through this event, we're going to hear some show stopping ideas. If you can bring together the world's viro virologists and get a vaccine in 10 months, I believe that we can get a similar um, just group of people together who say, this is how we change the health here. This is how we improve the economy. This is how we change the environment. I think the legacy is our future generations who can see that that idea was best that now, because now's the right time and that it got legs and it grew into something amazing. That might be a service, that might be, it's influenced our new um, council. Um, it might be something that we can point to for, for this time and say, we did that, we got behind that, that was bare through this event. And actually look at it now, there's a tangible building or service or solution we, we can point to. And it was our generosity of spirit, it was our ingenuity that gave that life. And I think that will be its legacy. I don't think this is just gonna be a one-off event that falls flat. People love being included and they love to take part in co-creating new things. And they love to feel special and significant and important. And the legacy of this event is you were, you were, you belong, you're important. Your effort is noticed and keep going, keep going because we are behind you. And the sacrifices you make is just breathtaking. When I think about what, what they've done through this pandemic, they have risked their lives going into care homes and hospitals and services and they've risked their lives and they've often done it for nothing, no money. They've gone into vaccination centres, they've gone in test and trace, they've gone everywhere and all over Cornwall and they've given their lives. And when you ask people, why have you done that? Why have you gone so far? Why have you made such an effort? They say, I did it for those I love, I did it for my friends and I did it for my community. And that is so special. It's so special. And so that will always live on in Cornwall. That is so unique in Cornwall because you know what? We've got a massive percentage of the population in Cornwall that volunteers. So that says we've got high altruism and we've got generosity of spirit and um, we are special for it. We will not let our neighbor go without need, in need. And that makes us really special. And we always will be. And the next generation will inherit that from us. Absolutely brilliant, Helen. Thank you so much. It's lovely to, to see and feel your passion for this going through. And the, the amazing work that everyone that you're doing and everyone around you is put, putting into this. Absolutely top notch. I don't know what to say. It's, it's brilliant. No, it's the perfect <laughs> time for an event like this, isn't it? Yeah. To speak up, promote that change and just appreciate those volunteers everyone's looking so let's let's make a big noise and give them something to look at and realize and and if i could be allowed to just say one or two words to the the world leaders that are visiting and our own government i'd really like to yeah absolutely Go yeah <laughs> so i'd like to say that we're all people that you are fathers and mothers and daughters and friends we're all people let's not forget that let's not forget that our hearts and our hands, you know, is what we have in common. And let's not forget that that spirit of, of generosity, of caring for others is what makes us, you know, that is what brings us to life. And like I said before, we may not be rich or powerful or have any titles or any uh, legal authorities, but what we do have is our ideas to make a difference. So please listen to us. And if you want to visit this, 
beautiful place of Cornwall and leave behind a legacy, a gift. You know, often we go away, don't we, on holiday and we leave behind a tip for the host. If you want to leave something behind for the people of Cornwall, please feel free to. And we will absolutely ensure that that goes as seed funding onto the ground in all of the places of Cornwall into the hands of people who know how to make a difference. And I just want to thank the Cornwall Community Foundation, who very kindly offered to distribute any money that we would raise. And so if you are out there listening and you want to seed fund some amazing ideas from this and create a legacy, then you are more than welcome to do so. And you can get in touch and we'll make that happen for you. Absolutely brilliant. Thank you so much, Helen, for joining us on Chaos TV today. It's been lovely to have you. I hope you'll come back again soon. I'd love to. Thank you for having me. Thank you. Lovely job. Thank you. There we go. That uh, that was uh, Helen there. If you would like uh, more information about this exciting event, you can visit uh, www.cornwallvsf.org. And tickets are available now on Eventbrite. The link will make available on our social media channels. You can see it there on the screen. You can search Chaos TV UK. Brilliant. Absolutely amazing. The, she has a lot of passion for this. It's lovely oh. to see. It really, really is. Yeah, brilliant stuff. You, you have passion. You, you get things done as well. You really put your heart and soul into it. Uh, we're going to move on now to a couple of songs. We've got Back and Forth by MK and then Breathing by Ariana Grande. We'll see you in a moment.